Hi there, welcome back to my math channel, MathFab. In this video, I will answer you question number 5 from Pearson and Dex and A-level exam for statistics 1. This exam is taken in May 2024. Paper reference code is WST01-01. A competition consists of two rounds. The time in minutes taken by adults to complete round 1 is modeled by a normal distribution with mean 15 minutes. And standard deviation is 2 minutes. Use standardization to find the proportion of adults that take less than 18 minutes to complete round 1. Like the students that are taking less than 18 minutes will qualify for the next round. Let's find that probability. Uh, for that, uh, you need to find the probability of x less than 18 actually. Okay, Less than 18 minutes will qualify for the next round. This question is uh, taken from the topic normal distribution. You know that uh, if the random variable x is given there and it is uh, normally distributed, we are writing in this form normally distributed with mean mu and uh, standard deviation is here sigma sigma square we are writing like this now in this question x is normally distributed with mean 15 and standard deviation is 2 so we can write as 2 square okay now you need to find the probability of x less than 18 minutes this probability you have to find okay uh, to solve this one we always draw a bell curve for this one this is the normal distribution question we are drawing like this draw a bell curve okay uh, in the middle we know mean is uh, written in, in the middle of uh, this bell curve for sure 18 will be on the right side of this 18 will be somewhere here so you can write here 18 and you need to write uh, you need to find this area that is less than 18 Actually, this area of this bell curve will give you the probability uh, for this one. So, you can share the area less than 18. So, this part will be the area less than 18. You need to find this area. Got it? So, uh, for these questions, we always convert this uh, normal distribution into the standardized normal distribution. What is the way how to draw a bell curve for the standardized normal distribution? Corresponding to this mean, we always take as 0 okay corresponding to 18 we will write here z uh, because uh, you can find these probabilities from the z table uh, therefore you have to convert this uh, normal distribution into standardized normal distribution for standardized normal distribution mean is 0 you need to find this area got it how to sketch this hopefully uh, we know the formula for z if you remember that formula, I'm writing as is x equal, uh, z equals to observed value minus mean divided by sigma. Uh, we know that sigma is there, that is 2, mean is 15, and here observed value is 18. This is the observed value, and this is mean, and sigma is here. If you plug the values, you will find the value of z. So z will be equals to, uh, use the values here, 18 minus mean, mean is 15, divided by 2. Uh, so you get as 3 over 2 and after simplifying you get answer for z as 1.5 got it so you can change this one normal distribution into standardized normal distribution like that so you need to find value of z less than 1.5 okay uh, so it is 1.5 so this area you need to find how to find this area uh, we will use the z table how to get the answer for this one uh, let me show you uh, here the first column is given as z uh, this 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 one is giving you the area phi of z is the area okay so 1.5 uh, you will find from uh, this column let me find that is uh, so 1.5 is here you know uh, this is 1.50 so corresponding to this value this is the area okay this will be the answer for well, probability z less than 1.5 because this table is giving you all the areas less than z value therefore you always convert the answers less than z even though if it is greater we will convert in the upcoming parts so hopefully you understand how to find the area from the table uh, corresponding to the z value so answer of this one will be 0 0.9332 therefore you can write the answer here 0 0.9332 if uh, if we round our answer to three significant figures we can write as 0 0.933 mostly we are writing our answer to three significant figures uh, by the way both answers are acceptable 
first part of this question is done in the next part only the fastest 60% of adults from round 1 take part in round 2 so 60% of uh, the adults uh, who, uh, who who qualified for round 2 uh, their probability is given there it is 60% 60% means 0 0.6 you know 60% is 60 over 100 so you can convert this one into decimal like this I uh, use standardization to find the longest time that adult can take to complete round one if they are take part in round two so uh, you know average time to qualify uh, for round two is 15 minutes so 60% if it is 15 minutes it means 15% for 15 minutes 50% is on the left side of uh, the bell curve and 50% of the data is on the right side of the bell curve okay so that time for sure that time will be more than 15 minutes uh, because it is 60% so if you draw a bell curve for this probability that will draw it here like uh, it is given in the question uh, that probability of x less than x is 60% so we can write as 6, 0.6 okay so if you draw a bell curve for this one it will be like that and uh, we know that mean, uh, mean the average uh, average minutes to qualify for round two is 15 minutes that is given in first part so 60 percent you know 50 percent is on the left side 50 percent is, is on the right side so for finding the 60 percent uh, for sure that time will be on the right side okay so less than this one for let's say that time is x and uh, this area will be 60 percent okay this area is 60 percent we can write as 0 0.6 you need to find this time it is the maximum time to qualify for round two okay uh, now you have to convert this one into standardized normal distribution again corresponding to 15 we are taking 0 and corresponding to x we are taking z and we know that this area this area is 0 0.6 as the probability is given here 0 0.6 the area is given there therefore corresponding to this area you can find the value of z uh, from the table from the table uh, let me show you how to get the answer for z from the table Cor as I told you earlier, this one is the area. Uh, you will find 0 0.6 from here, from this column. 0 0.60. You know, this value is more closer to 0 0.6. This one, you know, 0 0.5987. This is 13 units away from 0 0.6. And this is 26 units away from 0 0.6. So we will choose this area. Corresponding to this one, we could find the answer of uh, Z z value will be 0 0.25 so z is 0 0.25 here again i'm writing the formula for z because you need to find the value of x the longest time uh, to qualify for around two is x value this one you need to find this value so write the formula here observe value minus mean divided by sigma use the values now everything is given uh, z is 0 0.25 x you need to find and mean is given there that is 15 and sigma is 2 from here you will get the answer for x this 2 multiply over there you get the answer as 0 0.5 you know and this uh, minus 15 you will move on the left side so it becomes positive 15 equals to x okay this 2 multiply here you get the answer 0 0.5 this minus 15 goes to the left side so it will be plus so answer of x will be equals to 15.5 so this is the longest time to qualify for round two okay uh, the average time to qualify is 15 minutes but the longest time to qualify will be 15.5 minutes uh, let's move on for the last part of this question now the time t minutes taken by adults to complete round two is modeled by the normal distribution with mean mu uh, this is separate thing now uh, t minutes and mean is not given here so only one thing is given that is uh, this part probability of mu minus 10 is less than t is less than mu plus 10 equals to 0 0.95 so for this range of values for t uh, we have the areas that is 0 0.95 that is 95 percent uh, find probability of t greater than mu minus 5 given that t is greater than mu minus 10 
you need to find this probability. Last part of this question. In part C, we need to find probability of t greater than mu minus 5 given that t is greater than mu minus 10. To solve this part, you should know the basic formula of uh, conditional probability that is probability of A given that B equals to probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. This is the basic formula of uh, conditional probability. We can apply that formula here. Probability of uh, T greater than mu minus 5. You will take the intersection with this part T greater than mu minus 10 divided by probability of t greater than mu minus 10. I, I wrote this one exactly like this. As uh, given in the question that uh, value of t is lying between, we can draw a bell curve for that. We know that mean and value of t is lying between this one mu minus 10 and mu plus 10 and uh, this area is given as well. It is given in the question that uh, value of t is between mu minus 10 and mu plus 10 and uh, probability for that time interval is given as 0 0.95, 95%. So it is 0 0.95. So the remaining 5% will be equally distributed among these two parts. You know, we have 5% left over there. 5% means 0 0.05. And this 0 0.05 will further divide it into two equal parts because the due to symmetry, these two areas are equal. Okay, these two areas are equal. If you divide this by 2, you get the answer as 0 0.025. So these two areas are 0 0.025. And this area is as well 0 0.025. Now look at the numerator. If you notice that uh, the area greater than mu minus 10 is going that way towards uh, right side you know if i use this color and uh, let me show you this this whole area the red one greater than this one this area is uh, we can add these two areas 0 0.95 and 0 0.025 to get that area that is greater than mu minus 10 got it so and we know that the intersection part let me show you again uh, mu minus 10 the value of t greater than mu minus 10 that is you know if you take the intersection of t greater than t greater than mu minus uh, 5 and t greater than mu minus 10 the intersection part will be this 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 value okay so in the numerator you can replace the value because intersection of these two areas you know mu minus 10 is somewhere here like mu minus 10 uh, mu minus 5 so this is the black black area okay this black area is the intersection part of the red area. So if you take the intersection of these two values, you get the answer in the numerator as t greater than mu minus 5. Hopefully you understand how to get this one in the numerator and divide by probability of t greater than mu minus 10. So from this diagram, you can easily figure out the value of the denominator probability of t greater than mu minus 10 you know greater than mu minus 10 is these two areas so you add these two areas so the answer of this one will be 0 0.975 so this area we got the answer of the denominator but you still you need to get the answer of the uh, numerator as well by using symmetry uh, the area that is uh, greater than mu minus 10 is also equals to t less than mu plus 10 as well you know if you observe this diagram for sure these two areas are equal the greater than this area and less than mu plus 10 these two areas are equal in other case you will add these two areas still you will get the same answer why i am doing so because in z table we are getting always the smaller than z values it is giving giving you the area on the left side of z uh, we can convert this uh, normal distribution into the standardized normal distribution uh, what is the standardized normal distribution for corresponding to this mean? We have mean 0. Corresponding to this mu plus 10, we will have z here. And we know that this area, this area is, this one is 0 0.975. Now, from the table, corresponding to this 0 0.975, you will get the answer of z. 
let me show you in the table 0 0.975 the area 0 0.975 is this one uh, this is the area okay uh, corresponding to this value we have z value of z is 1.96 so uh, from table from table corresponding to this area we are getting the answer for z as 1.96 so answer of C is 1.96. Now by using formula of uh, Z, if you remember, observe value minus mean divided by sigma, plug in the values, you know, corresponding uh, to Z, this one, this value, actually this value is X. So we can replace here, that is mu plus 10 minus mu divided by sigma, right as is, and Z, we just got it, that is 1.96. Mu cancelled, and you can interchange these two numbers. So, sigma will be equals to 10 divided by 1.96. By using calculator, you get the answer of sigma as 5.1. We already found the area of uh, this one, t greater than uh, mu minus 10 is 0 0.975. Now, you need to find the area, this one, p probability of t greater than mu minus 5. Now, you need to write the area for t greater than mu minus 5. As I told you earlier, uh, greater value is not given in the table. Uh, we always convert this one into smaller value. Due to symmetry, if you remember, if you draw a bell curve here, you know, uh, here is mean, mean is mu, and uh, mu minus 5 is here, mu minus 5 is here, and mu plus 5 is this one. They are equal, equidistant from the mean. t greater than mu minus 5 is equals to t less than mu plus 5. You know, this area, the black one, is equals to the area, and this green one, okay? They are equal. For sure, they are equal. So we need to convert this normal distribution into the standardized normal distribution. What is the rule? We just take corresponding to this value, uh, z value here, and uh, we need to find this area, actually. Now you need to find value of z. Uh, z, value of z could be found by using the formula that is equals to observe value minus mean divided by sigma. Now plug in the values in this formula, we will get the answer of z. x is this value, okay, uh, because you are taking this value. So x is uh, mu plus 5 and mean is mu divided by sigma. Sigma, we already got it, that is 5.1. This is cancelled out, 5 divided by 5.1 will be equals to 0 0.98 so you need to find the probability of z less than 0 0.98 got it so answer of 0 0.98 less than 0 0.98 uh, look at uh, this table this is the area corresponding to this z value it is 0 0.8365 so answer of this part will be 0 0.8365 so by using these two answers this answer and this answer in this formula we will get our result uh, in the numerator we will use this value 0 0.8365 and in the denominator we will write this answer 0 0.975 so by using these two values here in this formula we will get the result therefore probability of t greater than mu minus 5 given that t greater than mu minus 10 will be equals to, we will divide these two probabilities. Uh, one was 0 0.8365 and divided by, the other probability is 0 0.975 and we will get the result as 2, 3 significant figures, 0 0.858, 2, 3 significant figures. So this is the answer of the last part of this question. Uh, so question number 3 is done, if you have any doubt or you want to write any comment about this question, please write in the comment box. Thank you.